Thank you for all for coming this morning. I know we all had a long night last night. But I would like to take a few minutes to talk to you about a subject that affects all of us. Most of us know someone with hypertension. Some of us may have hypertension. What is the difference between high blood pressure and hypertension? I'd like to tell you a story about a friend of mine named Adam. Five years ago, Adam was a 38-year-old working in apartment management business in Seattle. Adam never went to the doctor, but ate a vegetarian diet, and jogged three to four miles three to four times a week. He started seeing spots while at work and made an appointment to see an ophthalmologist. The ophthalmologist on examining Adam was so concerned that he sent him immediately to the emergency room because of what he saw in Adam's eyes. Upon arrival to the emergency room, Adam's blood pressure was 260 over 150 millimeters of mercury. Adam was admitted to the ICU for four days while they tried different medications to control his blood pressure. After discharge, Adam remains on two very potent blood pressure medicines to this day, which cause him many physical problems, but do adequately control his blood pressure. I've been a nurse for 18 years and treated many cases just like Adam's, some moderate hypertension to very severe and life-threatening hypertension. Many of these cases are associated with cardiac factors such as stroke or myocardial infarction or heart attack. We all should find out what our baseline blood pressure is and if hypertension, if hypertensive, seek treatment immediately or risk injury or death. What I'm going to talk about today is what hypertension is, current treatment, and the ways to prevent it. Let's get started by discussing what hypertension is. Casey, Benson, and O'Neill in their book, The Harvard Medical School Guide to Lowering Your Blood Pressure, discuss blood pressure as a formula. Let me get over here. The formula is cardiac output times systemic vascular resistance equals blood pressure. That can be easier explained by cardiac output being heart rate times stroke volume times resistance that the heart has to push against to get the blood pressure. Or an easier way to think of it is the heart beats per minute times the amount of blood pumped by the heart each beat times the diameter of the blood vessels to equal the blood pressure formula. Normal blood pressure is less than 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury. Prehypertension would actually be classified as 120 over 80 to 139 over 89 millimeters of mercury. Primary hypertension is 140 over 90 to 159 over 99. And secondary hypertension is one, over 160 and 100 over 100 millimeters of mercury. Primary hypertension occurs in 90 to 95 percent of the cases in the United States. Most of have, most of those have an unknown cause. Secondary hypertension occurs in 5 to 10 percent, and those are always almost always have an identifiable cause. Many times uh, associated with kidney disease, cardiac disease or stiffening of the vessels, the walls or the vessels themselves. We, now that we know what hypertension is, we can discuss treatments. Treatment usually consists of two modes, one being healthy lifestyle changes and the other medications. For hold, Everybody hold up your hands. Five fingers on a hand, obviously, and there's five healthy lifestyle changes that we can do to decrease our blood pressure. First is stop smoking. Probably the most important because it also affects your cardiac health. Limit alcohol to two drinks for men, one drink for a woman per day. One drink is considered five ounces of wine, 12 ounces of beer, or one and a half ounces of hard liquor. Eat a diet that's high in fiber, calcium, magnesium, and potassium. 
drink adequate fluids, decrease your salt intake to 1,500 milligrams or less a day, and decrease your red meat consumption. That diet alone, those diet recommendations alone can decrease your blood pressure systolically 8 to 14 millimeters of mercury. Weight reduction. For those that are obese or overweight, for every 10 kilograms of body weight lost, 5 to 20 millimeters of mercury of the systolic blood pressure can be lost as well. Physical exercise. It is suggested that 30 minutes a day of aerobic exercise most days of the week would uh, lower your blood pressure 4 to 9 millimeters of mercury. Medication is used if after a trial of healthy lifestyle changes is not effective or if initial presentation of blood pressure is secondary in nature or having a cause. Usually you would start one medication for primary hypertension or two medications for secondary hypertension. Add medication until you get the desired effect. Many medications used to treat hypertension uh, affect the body differently. Diuretics release or decrease the amount of fluid volume or the blood pump per minute. ACE inhibitors stop angiotensin II production which affects the size of the blood vessels and also releases hormones that increase the blood pressure on their own. Beta and calcium channel blockers decrease the amount of beats per minute from the heart and peri peripheral vasodilators, just like their name says, changes the diameter of the blood vessels, opening them up, giving them less resistance for the heart to push against. An anonymous source said an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. With hypertension, this can be quite literal. The PubMed Bulletin, issued by the National Library of Medicine, sponsored by the National Institute of Health, Suggest that everyone over 18 get their blood pressure checked routinely, incorporate healthy lifestyle changes, as previously, as previously discussed, and follow your healthcare provider's advice for treatment and modification to control the causes of blood pressure, hypertension. Another important way of preventing hypertension is relaxation. It is suggested that each one of us find an activity, such as enrolling in a yoga class or a meditation class, take up a peaceful recreation like painting, listening to music, reading your favorite book, and enjoy those activities for 30 minutes at least a day. Are there any questions on hypertension or the treatment or prevention? No. I don't have any questions. I do. Doesn't, um, isn't it true that hypertension hits different cultures differently and? There are some associated risk factors. Whitney asked, are there any correlation with genetic factors or ethnicity and increased risk of hypertension? There is. In America, African Americans have a 37% more prevalence to hypertension. Uh, as composed to whites who have a 27%, uh, sorry, Mexican Americans have 27%, and white Americans have a 32% uh, prevalence for hypertension. Anybody else? Where are we going for breakfast? Well, that is not really pertaining to hypertension uh, right now, and that's what I would like to ask for right now, answer for right now. Any other questions? Have there any been any correlations done with um, obesity factors in the cultures? I mean, is that factoring into the whites being 37%, you know, are, are they at a higher risk of obesity as well? I haven't uh, looked into that yet. I, in the research that I've done for this presentation, I have not found any correlation with obesity specifically to the genetic or to genetic factors or ethnicity factors. Just that obesity itself is a uh, correlation with a higher blood pressure, and that they didn't mention any specific ethnicities. Gotcha. Any other questions? I wonder. I wonder if, um, with different ethnicities, if it's 
Is it more um, eating lifestyles, dietary, or is it why? You know, why does it hit different cultures differently? There again, the research or the research that I did preparing for this did not give specific yeah. reasons for the different ethnicities other than yeah. the, those three that I listed mm -hmm. have the highest prevalence here in the United States with African Americans unfortunately having the largest uh, presentation. I believe they're also the highest uh, group represented this group as well. Any questions? Is okay. there um, a stronger instance of male versus female with hypertension, or is Not, it shared equally? Uh, as far as genetics, in that aspect, male versus female, they did not show any, or the research did not show any higher research male versus female. Any other questions? So in conclusion, it's critical that we know what our blood pressure is and seek treatment if over the normal value of 140 over 90. In review, remember that high blood pressure is any reading greater than 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury. Hypertension is any reading greater than 140 over 90. Seek treatment for consistent blood pressures greater than 140 over 90. Treatment plans consist of lifestyle changes and medications. The five changes are to stop smoking, limit alcohol consumption, a healthy diet high in calcium, magnesium, fiber, and potassium, lose weight if obese, if obese or overweight, and routine aerobic air exercise. Prevention includes routine blood pressure checks for everybody over 18, the five healthy lifestyle changes we've already mentioned, and reduce stress. Finally, in nutrition and for health and health care, Whitney and L estimate that 21% of people with hypertension are unaware that they even have it. They further estimate that for each 20 millimeters of systolic blood pressure increase or 10 millimeters of diastolic blood pressure increase, you double the risk of cardiac death. Cardiac disease and stroke are the first and third leading cause of death in the United States, respectively. Let's do our part in decreasing these statistics by spreading the word to our friends and family to get your blood pressure checked Stop the silent killer and live a long, healthy life. Thank you. Breakfast should be low sodium and low fat. Let's go for